Hello and welcome to the second tutorial for the change of Mr. Picard here to a new uniformed officer for yourself. My name is Jessica, also known as Aquila or Jelana in Starbase 118. And I'm going to show you a very, very nifty trick today that works in Photoshop and again I don't know if it works in any other program so I'm sorry if you use GIMP or Paint or G whatever is out there almost said GIMP again um, I don't know if it works in your program but it does in Photoshop so maybe next time I have a trick for you that will work in any program so let's cross your fingers um, we have this lovely uniform here that we stopped with last time today we are going to cut out the head for it. I use this lovely model here because I can show you a trick with that that I couldn't with any other program that has a busy background. So if you have a busy background um, just use the same trick we used last time with the layer masks and erase everything around and then you have the problem that maybe you have these wispy hairs up here that you will have to either delete out of the picture and maybe paint over yourself or just ignore and make it all smooth or um, just ignore it and make it really 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 smooth hairline so I use brushes for that but I can show you that in another tutorial today I'm going to show you how to work with a uni background that is very high contrast to the hair. That's the important part here. What works best for me is work with a white background but it also works with others as long as it is unicolor. That means only one color. So um, first we're going to make this mask again because that is what we're going to work with all the time to erase things. Um, so we have this layer mask here and then we go down here at the layer window to channel. Now here you see the RG uh, RGB channel that shows you the whole picture in all colors. Then we have red, green and blue split up. What we need is the one with the highest contrast between background and hair. And looking through this, I think we should take the blue one. Now, um, so we don't destroy these channels, we duplicate this blue channel here. You can either right click and duplicate channel or you can drag it down here to new layer and then you have a copy of it. <coughs> After this we will work with the adjustments. We go to image, adjustments, levels or control L. Now you see this nice waves here and um, what I will show you now is when you move these three um, sliders here the black becomes more black, the gray becomes more black in this direction or more white in this direction. The white becomes more white when you remove this slider here. Just play around with it and make sure that you get a really nice contrast between these wispy hairs and the background. But not too much so it doesn't get too um, pixelated. Okay, so let's try this. Usually I'm just moving the grey one a little bit more up and then the black one. But you, you can actually ignore what the body does here because this part around the body we can just remove with a layer mask as we did last time. It is all about the hair right now. So let's do this. That looks nice. I can see really nice black and white up here with the wisps. Once you're happy with that, just click OK. And then we need to select this part. You click Shift and on this layer picture here. Or not. No, you click <laughs> you click Control and on this picture. You see, even I make mistakes sometimes. So um, that means everything here is selected that is white-ish. Then we go back to the layers and on our layer mask you still see the selection even if the picture now is in color. So we zoom closer here. 
Now we take our brush again, remember black hides and white shows. I use a soft brush for that and a bit bigger here. And then we go around the edges with our brush to delete the white background. So let's go here and here. So let's at least do stuff around the hair. And since we can't uh, see that really well behind this background, I usually work with a black background layer just to make sure that I can see everything well. You see here some parts that have been turned uh, semi-transparent. We can take care about that in a moment. So first, to be less destructive, I'm removing the white background here. Because I don't know about you, but if I have this white background in my eyes all the time, I'm going blind. And we don't want that, right? So um, once we have this, we will go back to the hair and I'm showing you a couple of more things. First, you can see this white halo around. So if we make a new layer down here, usually I do that with a button here because I really can't remember all those hot keys. And then we create a clipping mask. You can either do that by right click and go here, create clipping mask, or you can hold down your Alt key, go between those two layers, and it's the same result. What this clipping mask does, uh, does is that you can paint on that anywhere, but it only shows in those parts that are shown in the layer below. So, for example, Let's take a nice red color so I can show you that best. You can paint here, it doesn't show anything, but you can paint here and it shows because the layer below is shown there. Let's go like that. Then we use a little magical tool, which I like is the clone stamp on the brush size. It's okay for this to remove this halo here because we can try and try to match the color with the hair all the time but that doesn't really work well most of the time so I use the actual hair to color in that halo and we do that by sampling first hold down the alt key and click at the region where you want to sample then you go over the halo and color it in. See how easy that is. And we do this all over. Every now and then I resample to make sure that I get the hair color right. Because the hair color is not always the same everywhere as you know. Also to make sure the direction works. Because if I make a sample here and try to use it on the other side, I paint inside the head and not outside on the halo. So let me go around this here. Sometimes you have a lot of repeti uh, repetition here, so I'm trying to take a different brush then and remove that repetition a little. I paint here. do this so we don't have to erase all these nice little wisps here and we don't want to have the halo in our picture because that is stupid but as you see now the halo is gone now as I told you we have these little semi-transparent parts here all we do is we go to white change the brush color um, not brush color the brush size and paint over that again to make it nice 
solid again because nobody has seen the transparent ears unless you have a species of course that has seen the transparent ears but I don't remember one right now if you ever make one remember this trick um now let's go to the other side and fix this ear remember that you can hold down shift to make nice lines with your brush without actually painting the line okay that's there and now with the black brush we go around and we erase or delete whatever you want to delete the rest of the white background around this nice white color as you see here I have a little bump in my brush to avoid that I go into my brush settings here at the side if you don't see that um, you can go to window and here brush or press F5 then you get the window here I docked it because I use it all the time and then go down to spacing here as you can see if I move it up the spacing between the single brush dots gets bigger and if I move it down here you have a straight line without any spaces between those dots and that will help you to make a really nice smooth line instead of having little bumps in it oh, that goes too far um, let's go around here we don't need the whole upper body because most of it will be in uniform anyway so a little corner so I'm doing my putting my brush a bit down here there are hotkeys for that if you are on an American keyboard I am on a German keyboard so I can use the hotkeys for making the brush bigger or smaller with the keyboard that is why I'm going up there to do that all the time I think the keys for that on the American keyboard are the bigger and smaller than brackets I'm not sure if there's an English word for those but if you try that and you have an American or English keyboard that should work too and is way faster than going up there all the time so let me just do this here third click So we can have this done because then I am also going to show you how to increase that radius with the uniform. I might have to show you another tutorial at one time how to do that with long hair because long hair has the extra challenge that you can't just cut it out from the background because it goes over the body and um, most people would like to have the long hair showing also in front of the uniform so that will be an extra challenge but it's a little bit more advanced I think so um, I'm going to save this here just so we don't lose it in case something goes wrong then I'm going down to this um, halo covering layer and use merge down so we have only one layer of that because we will never put them apart we need them together then duplicate layer and I'm duplicating it to the Picard uniform file that I have opened in the background that way we have it in there and can move it and transform it and everything okay first we put that behind the uniform that will be easier with the color later and to transform it I either go to edit free transform or I press ctrl and T that is one of the <laughs> shortcuts that I know we have to make sure that we are on the right layer though so zooming out a bit because the picture is much bigger than the frame and then we scale it down as you can see I scale it down to the middle which is holding down shift and alt at the same time and it will 
work around the center point here. Now, if the center point is here, it will 